All right. So we got five articles to go through. We got this one and the rest of these to go through. I might just make this one big video or I might uh, do multiple videos, but that depends on how long this is going to end up being. They have also released a trailer. It is only 30 seconds long. It's probably this one right here. So we're going to go through this one at a time. And, uh, oh, wait, no, I only opened a fucking, whoops. One sec. Yeah, okay. Why does it keep opening the fucking... Oh, whatever, I'll just go through it one by one at a time. Anyways, we'll start here. So, Fantastic Talks the Day Before Gameplay Vision, Studio Culture, and Trademark Dispute. This is going to be an interesting one because we've been having this trademark dispute thing going on for a while now. It's still not back up on Steam, at least as far as I know. Uh, you have knockoff the day. It's like the day before or something like that. Somebody trying to get away with the name as well. Hold on. It's called it like the day after or something. No, yeah. Scrap Garden, the day before. Uh, Passcode Breaker, the day before. Like, anyone, everybody knew that the day before was a big fucking, you know, name. So they all added it into their fucking game titles. <laughs> Just because so, everyone, they all knew it to be getting looked up. But no, it's not back on Steam, so... Not sure if it'll ever come back on Steam, but whenever they finally finish the dispute. Anyways, that's a dark mode. Yo. <laughs> the Day Before is one of the most intriguing video game projects in recent memory. Bursting onto the scene with a stunning announcement trailer. Yeah, that was a very good render trailer. <laughs> or they, they say it's a, I don't know. It's a fucking... It was a trail. Let's put it like that. In January 2021, the MMO survival game developed by Fantastic. It is published by Mantona, a Singapore company, I guess. Or, no, it was originally, supposedly in Russia, and they went over to Singapore. But it's... I digress. Uh, was seemingly the game that many players have been wanting forever for even... Topping Steam's wish list charts for a month on end. However, the day before hasn't been without any controversies. Multiple delays, fantastics in uh, to its removal from the Steam, all resulting in questions of legality and claims that the Fantastic had uh, has had a dispute. So, yes, it was the most wish list thing on the place. That's obvious to everybody that's been watching this story of the day before. Um, the the controversies were the game's not real because they were so freaking quiet about it, right? So the the game's not real. The <laughs> it was many things here. I'm gonna adjust this camera. So it was about the game wasn't real. Uh, this, that, and the other because it was we kept getting like rendered videos apparently. And nobody was sure if this game was even real at the time, but it's whatever. Ne apparently now, because we had the whole development history for the day before pop up. So that was an interesting part. <clears throat> the legality shit was the whole, oh, this name's taken up by a fucking website calendar. So, and you didn't dispute it. So, screw you. They had a chance to dispute it, but they didn't. It is what it is. However, much like the infected uh, that, sorry, how much like the infected that roamed the day before, the world looking for f uh, flesh and feast on. I just had a stroke reading that. But, uh, <laughs> interest players have been hungering for more information on the upcoming survival game that is recently Fantastic's co-founder, uh, Edward and Asians, uh, Gustav. I'm gonna slay these names. <laughs> Gotasev, uh, spoke ex exclusively with Well Played about how the players can expect, uh, 
wow, what the fuck is happening? Expect from the day before gameplay on the ongoing legal battle over the name, the studio's unique approach to game design and shared new teaser trailer for the screenshots and fans to enjoy. All right, so let's let's go into the teaser trailer. I yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Can I get like better quality, maybe? Car, helicopter. So let's just mute that. <laughs> it's kind of loud. It okay. Is there? Get ready for November tenth. Well, that was lackluster. <laughs> that was extremely lackluster. Um, so we, I saw a helicopter flying in the background, and we saw a car driving around, and that was it. We already knew we had vehicles in the game because I already showed that off with the freaking armor uh, IFV or whatever the hell you call them. The armored vehicle. So we already knew that we had vehicles. So I don't know what was so special about the freaking sports car. Um, that was... They, they could have done better. That was pathetic. That trailer was pathetic. Oh, look at me. I'm driving my car. This is totally a zombie apocalypse game, guys. <laughs> well played, asked. Are you able to give us any update on the game's legal situation and when it will return to Steam. Is there any chance you'll change the name? Fantastic answered. We believe that the power is in the truth. Yeah. We were the first to start using the name related to the video game. This is an indisputable fact rooted in our belief in justice. We are optimistic that regarding our name le through legal proceedings as swiftly as possible. Here's the problem with that, what they said. Sure, they might have been using the name, but they did not make it a trademark. That was the issue. They never filed it as a trademark for the video game. They had a long time to do so. Like, this game's been in supposed development for a good amount of time. And they waited till like, hey, uh, somebody else has already t uh, trademarked this game. Do you want to dispute it? They never answered, apparently. So, legal team is failing, I would say, in a way. <laughs> no. Regarding the name, you lost that when you didn't file the trademark. I'm sorry, but that's legality. You might have been using the name, but you never trademarked it legally. So we'll see what happens. I'm very curious at how they're going to keep the name. They'll probably add a few things to it, but whatever. We want to reassure our community that our Steam page will be reinstated soon. That's what you said last time. Like, months ago. Soon. When do you mean by soon? We'll be back on the top of the wish lists. <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> a lot of people have already lost faith in this game, so that's the fattest maybe ever. Currently, our primary focus remains on development of the game itself. Thank God. Trademark-related matters are being managed by our new formerly New Zealand joint venture with our publisher, Mytona, aptly named Mytona Fantastic. Uh-huh. Whatever. <laughs> well played, S. The day before it looks like it's been heavily inspired by games such as The Last of Us and Division. No, not The Last of Us. <laughs> the Division, I understand. The Division, The Last of Us? Bro, I it's more of DayZ and The Division. The fuck you get The Last of Us from? <laughs> People have been waiting for a game like this because it finally replaced DayZ, in a sense. But, no. Not The Last of Us. Sorry, not like it. Uh... Was it a deliberate design choice to blend elements from games that inspired you to one unique experience? Are there any other games that have been influenced in Day 4? Yeah, the DayZ game. 
Uh, Fantastic responded with, our ins- oh, sorry, inspirations are drawn from industry champions. Games such as The Last... Stop saying The Last of Us. I can't believe that... They actually answered The Last of Us. That irks me. <laughs> and The Division have undoubtedly elevated and quality standards in gaming to unprecedented levels. And their creative teams to uh, diverse emerge... Blah, blah, blah. Creative teams deserve immense admiration for their accomplishments. At Fantastic, we are regarding, or sorry, we regard these teams as our men- mentors and their achievements as benchmarks to strive fo- uh, towards. Well, that's good, but we'll see that to be remained. To be, to remains to be seen. <laughs> the Last of Us. Oh, God. Whatever, I don't care. I I I don't see how the the, sorry. the Last of Us was an infection type thing, but it wasn't zombies as far as I remember. It was like a fucking mushroom infection, like mushroom spore infection. It wasn't like flesh eating. I don't know. I I never. I can't really say much. I never really played The Last of Us. So I don't really care. But The Last of Us doesn't make sense to me. It's more of a Daisy in a sense for me. The division, I understand that it did look kind of divisiony. I'm okay with that. We find inspiration in numerous AAA games. We believe life in itself, sorry, life itself is our greatest muse. Really, really. <laughs> By simply observing our surroundings, engaging in, in introspection, interse- blah, blah, introspection, and understanding the intricacies of the human experiences we often uncover the most profound inspirations the unique blend of drawing from life and top tier gaming helps shape our creative process allowing us to craft unique and innovative experiences for our players um when they say life is their muse are they referring to how their guys sit out in the cold with their laptops? Like, no, <laughs> that was a ter. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a terrible ad. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be sitting in the middle of nowhere on a laptop like that. Not in the negative eighty degree weather that you showed in that trailer <laughs> or ad or whatever. That was supposed to be the day before focused. Oh, by the way, <laughs> um, well played. Asks. The day before is easily the biggest project Fantastic has worked on. Facts. Are you confident that you can deliver your version of the game? What <laughs> what has the studio done to be able to develop the game of this scale? That is a very interesting question because, yes, this is their biggest game they've ever done. I've looked at their past games. This is the biggest thing they've ever done. So this will be this definitely be, be interesting. <laughs> Fantastic response with the day before is indeed the most ambitious and biggest challenge we at Fantastic have taken on. We are incredibly excited about it, and we are confident that our ability to realize our vision of the game, thanks to the unique blend of our team's hunger, our (laughs) our work culture, our publisher, Mytona, and the support of our external volunteers. Uh, I, I don't work on the game. I would just... I'm in the Microsoft Teams thing, so I get to have a little sneak peek at stuff. But this is one to one, by the way. I've not been really told anything that great, like ahead of time. Like this is this is live. Like we just found about this as well. <laughs> uh, breakthrough limitations and overcome challenges. These words are spirit of our organization. Really. Uh, we are here for a long haul and want to. Uh, we want to change the game industry. We want to show our other ordinary people. Sorry, we want to show other ordinary people like ourselves. Any like anything can be possible in this life. Um, you're not going to do anything game breaking. I'm sorry. There's no breakthrough. You're going to be coming through. It's not going to happen. There's nothing. I, I I as far as I can tell, you haven't done anything. That other games haven't done better. As far as I can tell. Zombie games. 
any Call of Duty zombies. Open world zombie games, State of Decay, uh, DayZ, like, not new there. Uh, Division has the looter shooter aspect somewhat. So, I, I don't know what's game breaking. Or game changing, or game, change the game for industry, I don't see that. It would be game, it would, trust me, it would be game changing if this game came out and was phenomenal, had zero flaws. Well, I can't say zero flaws. Every game has flaws. Facts. It would be a phenomenal thing to happen if you guys came out with this game. And I have faith in you guys, unlike a lot of, a lot of other people that I shouldn't have. I, I keep getting yelled at by my friends that I shouldn't have faith in you guys, but I have faith in you guys. Um, it would surprise the world if this game was actually amazing. That's the thing, so. Nice little screenshot, I guess. The day before will feature versions, feature various types of affected. Uh, Sure. We want our we want to reassure our community that Steam page will be reinstated soon. We will be back on top of the wish. Yeah, okay. How long is this? <laughs> this is long. This is long. Let me just scroll through the questions because I don't know if I want to read every single one of these. This is gonna be a long fucking video, dude. <laughs> The approach of volunteering has raised concerns from several people. How much... All right, that doesn't really concern me. Uh, are you able to share some details about how the core gameplay will work? Will there be story missions, objectives like The Division, or will players simply uh, venture out into the open world? Have you made a decision on how many players will... Okay, this is something we want to know. How many people will populate the server? That is a prime fucking question. Everybody's been asking. The day before is an open world post apocalyptic sandbox. Here, players will have opportunities to are fully immerse themselves in this new world. Exploring a huge skyscraper city called New Fortune City. Purchase houses. Purchase houses? Oh, Purchasing houses and vehicles and creating a unique and personal narrative along the way. While our game is pre uh, predominantly leans towards player versus player engagements, we have also in, uh, intercorrupt quests cert uh, centered around the restoration of society. In the day before, the fate of humanity truly rests in your hands. We cannot provide specifics on player guard population per server, Fuck you. At the stage, we, as we are currently in the testing phase, we are committed to striking a perfect balance between dynamic population, or sorry, dynamic, a dynamic populated world and optional gameplay preferences. Our primary aim is to provide the most thrilling uh, survival experience of the year to a wide array of players' preferences and play styles. Okay, um... Them not giving us numbers is slightly irritating. I do like the purchasing houses and vehicles, creating and creating unique personal narrative along the way. That's promising. Purchasing houses and vehicles, interesting for a zombie survival game. The closest thing we have to that is State of Decay with their whole house, like, base claiming areas and vehicle customization. So we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah. Will there be various types of zomb enemies, zombies, so more difficult takedowns? Well, they're similar, similar to Last of Us, or Runners, and Bloaters. Uh, within the boundaries of realism, we've designed various types of infected to add to complexity and thrill of the game. However, it is essential to note that the core focus of the game is solely on zombies. Instead of the heart of the, our game lies within the interactions and the experiences of players themselves as they navigate the inhabited post-apocalyptic world. So, 
We're not gonna. It's not gonna be like the date or uh, uh, the Last of Us. We're gonna have fucking spitter zombies and like big fucking juggernaut zombies that can toss cars out of the way. It's gonna be still relatively to the human capability of a person's body. So that's not that's not bad. The Woodbury Survivor Colony is where players can come together. Relax, trade items, and give each other tasks. Can you explain how this works? What tasks can player give one another? That does sound interesting. <laughs> Woodbury serves a central hub in our game. A safe zone where players can interact, form alliances, engage in trade, and undertake quests aimed at so social restoration. Societal. So, no, social? Societal. Sa social. Why am I having such a hard time reading that? Uh, an ex oh, God, I just had a brain fart. An exciting yet undiscovered feature we're introducing is the opportunity for players to seek employment within Woodbury. These in-game jobs range across various professions, from manual labor as a loader and showcasing artic ar artistic talents at a museum these jobs will add another layer of realism and immersion to the game. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Jobs in a zombie apocalypse world. It'll be interesting. I'm. This is somewhat turning into an RPG in a sense, I guess. I don't know. Black, like blacksmithing, gun, like making guns and shit. Like I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of curious about the job options. Beyond these activities, we also introduce immersive relaxation elements to enrich players to the uh, sorry enrich players the experience as previously showcased. We often offer a swan, sawan, sawana. Wow, I'm I'm a bit stupid. <laughs> where players can unwind and enjoy their memorable interactions with each other. Players, additionally, they can hang out in the bar for casual conversation or yeah, conversations or hit the gym and work on their game game fitness. That'll be interesting. Big buff motherfucker. <laughs> uh, these features add the depth of our game, reinforcing the sense of a lived in vibrate, vibrant economy or sorry, community, even Amidst the post-apocalyptic setting. That's that's going to be interesting. Uh, the game will also feature base building. Will base building... Will bases have a safe haven for players? Or can players attack whatever? Good good question. A key feature of our game will, have, will be the ability for players to purchase their own in-game houses. These properties can be completely personalized, furniturized, and to reflect... The owner's tastes and severe, or sorry, served a, as a gathering point for friends within the game. Importantly, these homes will offer a res uh, respite from, or sorry, yeah, respite, respite, res respite from the surrounding chaos. These are designed to be safe havens, uh, immune to player attacks in a sense. Uh, they are player personal sanctuaries within the game. So no base rating. Um, I guess you'll guys have to just sit outside people's bases and wait for them to walk outside. Oh, well. One of our trailers mentioned something called Azor Initiative. Can you give us any detail on that? What? The role of Azar Initiative is to integrate our game's universe. Integral. Azar is a responsible operation of the city's electricity in the aftermath of the post apocalyptic environment, showcasing the pre pervasive influence this mega corporation has in infiltrated every aspect of day life in the metropolized numerous sectors. Uh, meh.
Oh, I already knew about this part. It's coming out on PC November 10th, and consoles are going to be later. So that one's done. Fast cars and helicopters. This all right. So this was this was sad. This was this was really really sad. They chose a sports car over like some Mad Max vehicles, like armored covered vehicles. Like why are we why are we got sports cars? Why is that important? I don't know. The world of fans has shared how the exclusive new trailer in the upcoming hike. I don't know. Fucking. So we already, we already talked about how it shows the cars and helicopters. We already know about the whole consoles and freaking. How it'll be coming afterwards, I guess. We already know about how it's mainly player versus player. And we just learned that there's now job seeking. So this was the main article. This was all the other tidbits that were, if you want to read just this, you can. So I guess these weren't as important as I thought they were. So jobs, buying houses, cars, buildings, I guess you can fully customize a house, which is cool. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, now let's wait for the actual game to come out. <laughs> That's where we stand right now. It, I hope the game comes out, and I hope it's good, and it'll be interesting, and I hope they don't fuck it up, but we'll see what happens. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll leave the link in the description below, and you can go reading a bit more in there if you want, but th we basically covered anything important as far as I could tell. All right, well, that, that was it. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.